Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud government has been invited to an event titled Preparing to Settle Gaza in Gaza. Now, the event will take place next week, and ministers that have already committed to attending include all your favorite terrorists like Itamar Ben Gavir, Bazalel Smotrich, others include Amikai Eliyahu and Yitzhak Wasseloff. Now, the event, according to Haaretz, an Israeli paper, will feature the construction of a sukkah as part of a city of sukkahs. Uh, or sukkahs, I should say, initiative by the Nakala movement, which is known for establishing illegal outposts in the West Bank. Now they'd like to establish illegal outposts in Gaza. And there's the Israeli cabinet helping them uh, get there. Yep, that's exactly right. So um, this is, again, a movement uh, that. Uh, Basically, the Nikala movement stated that the event is not just a theoretical conference, okay, but a practical exercise and preparation for renewed settlement in Gaza. They're rubbing it in your face. They're not even trying to hide it, okay? No one's trying to hide it here. They're making it very clear what they intend to do. Now, back in January, Nikala started advocating for encouraging voluntary emigration of Palestinians out of the Strip. I'm gonna pause on this story for a second to inform you all that currently Israel is not allowing any injured or severely wounded Palestinians to leave the Gaza Strip to get any medical care after they took control of the Rafah border. That's the border between Gaza and Egypt. The Israelis decided we're not gonna let anyone leave now. and. They're also continuing with their aerial bombardments and military operations, killing more and more people. It's just really interesting, Jenk, that if they want, they always say whenever you see some official, whether it's a military official or government official from Israel on television, whenever they're confronted about the fact that they've slaughtered tens of thousands of innocent people, including children, they always say, "Oh, every civilian death is a tragedy. It is a tragedy. They really do find it tragic, which is why when they have severely wounded civilians, including children, wanting to leave to get medical care in Egypt, they block them from doing so. Because you know, every civilian death, according to the Israeli government, a real tragedy. So, so. how does it help Hamas to let a child who's critically injured out so they can survive and live? How, what are they gonna bring back weapons? What are they gonna what but they're not even necessarily gonna come back. I mean, you imagine that they would, but with them leaving, the very act of leaving, how does that hurt Israel? Other than the fact that, oh, a Palestinian stayed alive. I mean, that's a Palestinian child, one more dead, and they, I guess they feel, I mean, this is not me, it's their decisions. They're not letting them out, they're starving them now in northern Gaza. They haven't allowed food in since October 1st. So why do they want the Palestinian children dead? So you tell me, because I know the excuses. The excuses are, uh, yeah, Hamas is using civilian shields. All of Hamas's leaders are dead. Uh, still, 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 still. But in the original bombing, the hostages that were released earlier said they were scared to death they were gonna get killed. And you didn't get any of the Hamas leaders when you wiped out 10, 20, 30,000 in the beginning. Mm. So the great majority of the people that were killed are women and children. So what? Uh, no, 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 they, they had it coming, it's our self defense. Yeah. But wait, how is settling Gaza with illegal settlements with religious fanatics part of your self defense? Back in- so, but Sorry, Anna, one yeah. more thing about that and we'll talk more about it. But if you really believe that settling Gaza or taking southern Lebanon or taking more land in the West Bank, which is currently happening, is somehow part of your self defense, no, you're a liar. And you don't think that at all, you think I want more land and I'll do anything to get it. And I'll use any excuse, it doesn't matter. Dumbass American politicians and media will just repeat it and go, oh, they had to do it in self defense and kill all those kids and as because they were human shields. It's all Hamas's fault, it's all the Arabs fault. If they just would get understand that we, we get to have their land and they get to get killed, you see how they're the terrorists. So okay, you can tell yourself any outrageous lie you want. But the rest of the world sees these atrocities. And now you move those guys in and everybody knows 
Israel's a bunch of thieves. <gasps> you can't say that. Well, what if you steal the land, what are you? So they haven't done it yet. They don't have to do it. I hope to God they don't do it because I, I, I'm still such a sucker. I hope for a safe Israel and a safe Palestine, two states that live in peace, right? So Israel, you're going to make the choice now. You move on those settlers and the whole world knows you were just stealing the land and never defending yourself. It was always a lie to kill more Palestinians and take more land. It's not my choice and, they, and no one's made it yet. It's Israel's choice. So let's see what they do going forward. So back in January, uh, Nicola stated or started their advocacy in building settlements in Gaza. And uh, they put out all sorts of statements. And I think the statement is, is telling. The movement added that the return to settlement in Gaza is no longer just an idea, but a process that is already in advanced stages with government and public support. Now, several members of the Likud party have confirmed uh, to Haaretz that they do plan to attend, though Bibi has alleged, no, 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 we never intended to take land in Gaza. That was never the intention. Uh, he lied to the Israeli people, he lied to the American people, he lied to Jake Tapper, a huge fan of his, uh, during an interview on live television. Here's a reminder of that. I want a civilian administration that is run by Gazans who are neither Hamas nor committed to our so destruction. So you're taking it off the and table. The third thing that we need to do is, no, I'm not. I'm putting it on the table, on the contrary. No, you're, that's not I'm, true. I'm saying you're taking fact, off a, a, an Israeli occupation of Gaza, of Gaza. You're taking off the table an Israeli if occupation. You mean, if you mean resettling, if you mean resettling Gaza, I'm, yeah, it was never in the cards, and I said so openly. And some of my constituents are not happy about it, but that's my position. At least 10 Likud members do plan to attend. Uh, 10 out of the 32 lawmakers from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party, including a cabinet minister announced on Wednesday that they will be participating in this conference that's all about building illegal settlements in Gaza. Which, Jake, why do you think they leveled Gaza? 85% of the buildings gone, gone. Houses, schools, universities, hospitals, gone. You okay, yes. Part of the reason why they did it, get rid of as many people as humanly possible. But the other reason why they did it is because they want to build their own settlements there. They leveled it for a reason, okay? It was, anyway, you have Hamas militants in the tunnels. You want to get the Hamas militants. You don't do it by bombing literally every building you can possibly bomb. Yeah, so guys, there's two alternate theories here and we're gonna find out which one is which. And again, no one but Israel gets to make this decision. They have the ultimate power. First, let me explain one thing that Anna's alluding to. You know, they said there, well, they think some of the Palestinians might be voluntarily leaving Northern Gaza. Well, currently they're doing a strategy called surrender or starve. They're not, and they're saying, well, if you stay in Northern Gaza, we're either gonna bomb you or we're gonna starve you to death, so you should move. And if you starve to death, we told you to move. We told you we were gonna starve you and murder you, and you didn't move. But at the same time, they say they're voluntarily leaving. <laughs> I mean, come on, come on. You'd have to be so stupid as to be a, a cable news anchor in America to believe an outrageous lie like that. So is it voluntary that they're leaving or are you starving them and bombing them to death? so that they'll leave Northern Gaza, which you have turned into a parking lot, which would be a perfect place to build new settlements mm -hmm. now that it's completely empty after your genocide and ethnic cleansing. So which one is it? I'm not making that decision, Israel is. And will the American media be honest with you? No, they'll move the goalposts immediately. The minute they start moving those settlers in, in the beginning they'll huff and puff and go, "Oh, this is not what they said and this is really problematic. Jake Tapper will even probably take that video and say, oh, Netanyahu didn't say this, I'm very aggrieved. And later they'll say, oh, they have a right to defend themselves. They had to do it, they had to do it. We have to send them 40 million, 40 billion, 80 billion, etc. There's nothing that Israel can do that is evil enough for American media and American politicians not to help them do it. So, but they can go in the other direction and not settle it. Netanyahu could be telling the truth, and that's great. And well, so will I say if I if they don't go into Gaza and they get out of southern Lebanon and they don't take any land, I will say to you guys without any hesitation, as I've said a hundred times, a genocide, one of the worst 
war crimes and atrocities of my life. But hey, they didn't take land. And they got to a ceasefire and they ended it. And so for all the people who were super nervous about them taking land, including us, which would lead to a much, much larger war, an endless war, thank God they didn't do it. Will everyone else in media, if they do take the land and move the settlers in, come out and apologize to their audience and go, we were sorry. It turns out the Israeli government is full of liars, terrorists, and thieves. We were just mouthpieces for the Israeli government and regurgitated their propaganda and lied to our audiences and refused to do any, even a little bit of an investigation to see if they meant what they were saying, if they were being honest about what they were saying. I mean, that's all they've done. They were stenographers for the Israeli government. It is pathetic. Our government uh, is a government that represents Israel's best interests before the best interests of the American people and before the best interests of that entire region. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I just don't understand anyone who is an American who has morals, who believes in our system of government and what it's supposed to represent supporting what is going on in the Middle East right now. I don't understand how anyone could. Well, yeah. I, look, I, I don't know for sure because it, this is a thought experiment, right? But I would like to believe that if Armenia was carrying out the atrocities that Israel is carrying out right now, I would be mortified, mortified. I wouldn't come on this show to defend atrocities only because, oh, my precious identity, I'm an Armenian. So if Armenians are committing atrocities, I'm going to provide cover for them? Yeah, well. I don't get it, man. I really don't. I really don't. I don't get how people who were horrified by the atrocities that were committed on October 7th could then turn around and watch similar atrocities be carried out by the Israeli government, by the IDF and say, no, no, it's, we have to do this. This is for our safety. Children with bullet holes in their skulls as young as five years old, five years old. We had to do it, we had to do it. No, you, you know those five year olds, those five year olds can get real dangerous. If no, anyone, no, the Israeli government is dangerous. If, okay, it is a destabilizing presence in the Middle East right now. Let's keep it 100, that is the truth. We're asking for bare minimum decency. If anyone said uh, five-year-old Jewish kids deserve to be shot in the Disgusting. head. Disgusting. We would fight them to the end of our lives. We would, that's anathema to everything that we stand for. And we would protect our Jewish brothers and sisters to the end. So we're asking you, for God's sake, don't say it's okay to shoot Palestinian children in the head. It's not a tough ask. So I know, just like the Trump lunatics, they'll say, nope, I, everything is fake news other than what Netanyahu and the terrorist Ben Gavir says. I only believe in the terrorist Ben Gavir and Smotrich. So I, no, I'm, I won't, I don't believe the New York Times, I don't believe American doctors, I don't believe all the journalists that uh, reported from there, from Fox News to CNN. And by the way, I don't, the journalists that were murdered there by Israel, they had it coming, they were human shields, whatever. So let's get to the very last uh, talking point here, Israel's right to exist. Uh, so this is apparently breaking news to a lot of people, Israel does exist, it already exists. Palestine does not exist. And so the Israeli cabinet, and this is why we talk about how mainstream media reporters and anchors are almost all liars. The Israeli cabinet already voted on this recently. And they said they will never allow a Palestinian state. So who is blocking whose right to exist? Did you ever hear Jake Tapper and Dana Bash or whoever else? Tony Dokopal or whatever dopey he is or any, but it doesn't matter really any anchor on, on television. Come out and tell you, oh my God, shocking news. Israeli cabinet votes to deny Palestinians a state forever. Turns out they were lying all along and they just wanna keep the occupation and take more Palestinian land. Did you guys report that? Oh, None of you reported it, Oh, that's interesting. None of you made a big deal out of it. But the minute that anybody does anything about Israel, they have a right to exist, you're trying to take away their right to exist. Nobody's trying to take their right to exist away, at least not here, not in rational conversations. But you are taking the Palestinians right to exist away and no one in America cares, the media doesn't care. They're like, ah, oh, they're just Arabs, who cares? But Israel, where's our next talking point? And all the politicians are, of course, all 100% corrupt. If you don't know, there's regular Zionism, and you could have massive issues and debates about that. Then there is revisionist Zionism and religious Zionism. Revisionist Zionism is take all their land, take Jordan, take the West Bank, take Gaza Strip, take it all. 
because we want more land. That is Netanyahu's dad was a giant advocate of that. It appears Netanyahu is a huge advocate of it. And the religious Zionism is roughly, oh, God gave us the land. We're the chosen people. We're in holy war. We'll kill all the Arabs. We'll kill all the Muslims and we'll take their land because God gave it to us. Those two forces are enormously powerful in Israel. How many times did you hear it? You'll hear it in great podcasts like Ezra Klein. So thank you for talking about it. You'll hear it in places here and there. We still have some good journalists here in America. But would you ever hear about it in cable news that a giant part of the electorate, including the leaders of Israel in the cabinet, are in favor of stealing Arab land, either because they're revisionist or religious Zionist? And they, they say it, they say it out loud. We're gonna take their goddamn land and we're gonna ethnically cleanse them. We're gonna move them out. How come you never hear that? Because our media and our politicians lie to you on purpose on behalf of Israel. I'm gonna leave you with this because I wanna tell you exactly what they're saying. They're saying it, they're saying it out loud, they're printing it in their flyers and their invitations. This is for the invitation that they're sending out there to build the settlements in Gaza. A year after the pogroms of October 7th, we will stand together, Likud members, regional Likud, branch chairs, MKs and ministers, to jointly declare that Gaza is ours forever. A poster advertising the October 21st event read, victory is settlement, it is doable, added a message on a Gaza settlement WhatsApp channel where it announced the participation of nearly one third of the Likud faction Knesset members. So that is the reality of the situation. You're not gonna hear that from the media here in the United States, but you're gonna hear it from us. And I'm not gonna hide it, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, and I'm not gonna come up with magical thinking to find some optimistic end to this war. There is no end to this war because Israel is backed by a military superpower that enables everything that Israel wants to do. So they will slaughter as many innocent people as they want. They will shoot as many five year olds in the head as they want. It'll continue and go on and on and on. And it's gonna happen with the use of your tax dollars. Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us, become a young Turk.